Well, this one is of the uh, obvious Ravenna Glassworks. I'm pronouncing it right this time. <laughs> um, with uh, what I thought was a chip in the lip at first, um, is just a manufacturing glob dip or whatever, glob dip, lip dip, and they just kind of strung that uh, ring on it. I mean, you just don't get much cruder than that. And uh, the embossing's funky. You know, the side view is funky. And then when I got to looking at the base, I uh, I thought, well, crumb. It's got three chips in the base, but you look real close at them. Those are uh, those are just folds in the glass at the factory. I mean, it's there's no sharp edges, no nothing there. And then you look at that base. My gosh, this thing is so crude on the base. It's just not even funny to even try to describe. Um, you know, pictures do the job pretty well there. I think um, anything else is, uh, you know, superfluous. Superfluous. Boy, that sounds smart, don't it? <laughs> anyway, uh, and that color, you know, when it was in the ground looking old dark green, I just couldn't believe it. And then cleaning it up. Now, this is with a strong light behind it. And, uh, you know, you move it into darker areas of light and it, it it gets a little bit darker in color but regardless of depth of color that that's just a killer color in my book and uh, you know, poor thing barely stands up poor thing uh, at least I forget to uh, mention the star on the back apparently there's one on the internet for sale right now that is aqua colored without a star so it's doubly unusual the color is unusual and no star um, haven't seen one of those before but then I haven't seen a lot of these to start with so there you go well right next to the Ravenna flask in that same hole came in came out this little uh, Pikes Peak flask uh, half pint with the uh, hunter shooting the deer on the back side and uh, you know everything everything looks pretty crude not as not as funky as that Ravenna flask but uh, boy it's got a bow in it you know right right down where my thumb is there it's got some serious uh, bend in the glass and um, pretty early half circle key hinge mold again um, and uh, you know, so far all of these bottles are in you know flawless damage free condition they all need a a pro cleaning but um, uh, they look okay to my eye Well, okay, these were some of the more interesting uh, bottles out of the uh, Hunting Hunts Honey Hole dig. Uh, the coolest one of the bunch is this guy over here on the left. This is a uh, previously unknown St. Louis uh, hair bottle, J.C. Elms. Um, Circassian oil. From St. Louis Mo. Nothing else on the sides. A really funky. Wants to be a Pondle <laughs> base. I don't know what the heck's going on here. Um, I suspect that's just a big fold in the glass here. It's kind of probably looks like a crack on the video, but it's really not. There's it's just a kind of a streak streak of glass across there hard to film but anyway uh i was only able to find a a single uh advertisement for it that was much later than the bottle 
um, but it appears to have dated back as far back as 1865, according to one ad that I found. So, um, I, you know, what can I say? I dug it up next to these uh, Mrs. Allen's World Hair Balls and Bottles. And this one's got a nice long slender neck to it. Where this guy, I mean, it's basically the same bottle. Um, but he's got a shorter, shorter neck. A little squattier looking. And here's one of those Lions Catherin. Catharian? I don't even know how to pronounce that. Uh, Cath hair on. <laughs> you know, like hair on what? Fire? Anyway, um, this is one of their later ones. Uh, they, come, they come pondled and aqua, and this one's clear and tool top. So, not the oldest. Um, and then this one. S.A. Chevaliers on the shoulder. Really hard to see, especially with all the crud in it that won't come clean. For the hair. Uh, life for the hair. I knew it had something else there. All on the shoulder there. Life for the hair. Um, this one looks a bit older than... Almost all the others with one of those funky uh, half circle hinge molds and fairly crude looking uh, lip. Anyway, um, surprising to see so many hair products in one hole. Well, here's a, a small grouping of some color that I dug up in the Hunt's uh, Honey Hole Dig. These two guys over here are both uh, solid 1870s Hannibal Mo uh, pharmacy bottles. The L. Orinsky uh, Pharmaceutist. They got fancy with that one. Uh, they moved by 1880, or in 1880, I want to say San Antonio, Texas. Uh, there's a fellow there that I've communicated with that has dug Orinsky bottles from San Antonio. Um, so they were still in business, um, in the drug business when they moved. So anyway, these puppies are, you know, they're, they're not really rare, but they're hard to find. Oddly enough, they come clear, and the clear ones are even tougher to find than these. And then there's a cobalt blue um, circular round bottle that uh, is uh, pretty tough to find. I've dug three broken ones so far, and, it, and, they're, and it's driving me crazy. This guy here is a fairly typical Bixby, but in a nice uh, deep teal color. And this one's got the patent applied for instead of the March 6th, 1883 patent date. So I'm guessing this is 82, early 83. Usually the patent applied for is um, slightly older than the ones that have the actual patent date on them. Um, real funky top to it. A beautiful color. Some think these are shoe polish. Others say they're glue bottles. They kind of look more like a, a glue bottle. I think they're, uh, who knows. They're just a cool, pretty bottle. And then this bad boy was found inside of a pan. I got two of these. And this one, out of the two, is the only one with a truly rolled lip. The other one was had the same crude straight line hinge mold um, lion's powder for bed bugs um, missed the panel by at least 
a day and a half, maybe a week. <laughs> you know, I mean, look at that lip. That lip is as crude as they get. And it was my first one. I've never dug up any of these uh, lion's uh, bug powder bottles. I think they're cooler than cool. And they come in exotic colors like deep purple and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it was fun digging these because they uh, certainly pop out at you when you're pulling them out of the hole. Nice color, even amber. I always like to see color. And lastly, um, from the Hunt's Honey Hole that I wanted to sort of not highlight so much, but go over. Now, typical uh, Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. Um, except this one's super crude. Um, I've heard they, they find them pondled but I suspect more in England than they do here. Um, this one has an interesting uh, base marking, AOB Company. I think that's what that is, AOB. Um, pretty funky, pretty crude. Um, I don't know why. That, Sometimes these <laughs> common bottles really, really get my attention. This one really threw me. S.S. Newton and Company. And those S's really look a, a lot like the S's we're used to seeing from Pittsburgh glass companies. And uh, when I pulled it out, I mean, even with my glasses on, it was like Inglés S-A-U, uh, I'm, I'm assuming it was sauce, but as you can see, there's no more letters here. It, it starts with an N, a very faint E, E-N-G-A-L. I somehow transposed the, the A and the L, but I was calling it Inglés sauce. But uh, I'll... A little search and a little bit of um, sleuthing revealed this was Bengal sauce. B-E-N-G-A-L sauce. Um, Bengal table sauce. I forgot the table part. Anyway, uh, yeah, it, it took a little doing to figure out what the heck is this. I'd never heard of S.S. Newton before. It's, it's in Zumwalt's book, but she, she doesn't mention him making a table sauce. And then this little guy, uh, I just, upside down. I'm used, to, I'm used to looking at bottles upside down, apparently. X Basin's Hedyosmia. For some reason, I absolutely love that name, Hedios Mia. Uh, I might name my next dog that. <laughs> uh, you know, and I assume this was like a, a hair product or something. Um, I don't know why. Uh, super crude, almost looks like a refired panel on this bad boy. Um, straight line, hinge mold. Um... Apparently, from what I've been able to gather, it's a, it, it, it was like um, toilet water, Florida water, for uh, perfuming handkerchiefs. So I guess that was one of their better smelling goods. And then this guy came out and kind of near the head Yosmia, and I thought, boy, that looks like a barrel mustard. But it's a little bitty guy. I mean, you know, like a sample and I thought, I never heard of a sample barrel mustard before. So I threw it in my bag along with the other stuff. And when I got it home, uh, I discovered in very, very faint lettering, you can see maybe it says X Basin uh, for Philadelphia. And uh, boy, you know. Ground top, um, 
certainly has some age to it. I would guess as old as the X Basin Head Yosmia. So there you have it, wrapping up the Hunt's Honey Hole Better Finds, and uh, and I'll add some still pictures like a slideshow to the end, and uh, hope you enjoy. Well, okay, this is the uh, Brown's Aromatic Bitters from Hannibal Moe. As far as I know, only the second one in existence. Uh, and uh, the other one was sold at auction, claiming it was circa 1875. I think they're about 10 years off. I think this one's a solid 60s bottle. <clears throat> The, the serif embossing, uh, the crude applied top, and the base. You know, that, that's a chunk of, a little chunk of glass sticking out, and it's a, one of those half circle key molds. No letters, no, no embossings on the base at all. Um, and uh, it does seem to have a little whittle to the glass, but it's so cruddy. I mean, uh, it really needs a professional tumbling, but uh, yeah, definitely the rarest uh, local bottle I've ever dug up um, in one piece. So uh, there you go. That's that's it. Cleaned up as as cleaned up as it ever has been. Um, and on to the next one. Alrighty, um, for you Doyle's lovers. <laughs> These are the four out of the 25 that I dug up or so. Um, the first one that I dug up whole was this guy. And he's the only one that has this kind of rounded lip to it. And the only one that I noticed broke or whole that were uh, this color. Kind of that old amber color. Real funky. And I dug up a number of them with different base embossings. The, uh, this, uh, stylized E on the base seemed to be the, uh, the more colorful examples. Um, uh, this yellow guy, I'm, I'm calling that yellow just because, I don't know if you can see it, but nice glop on the lip on that puppy. You know, um, again, it's got an E on the bottom, but it's not quite, not quite the same as the other one, not stylized. And it's got also a, an accompanying, accompanying number two. Um, and some of the berries and the leaves were, had some minor differences. These guys, I swear, in, in one type of light they look puce and another one they look brown you know uh under an artificial light in the kitchen it looks red <laughs> so uh i hung on to these two just because you know from one day to the next one room to the other you know they take on a, a whole different color and this one's an e3 um, gosh, I think I came up with five different base embossings. Um, this one also is an E3. Um, every one of these w were applied tops. Um, with, uh, general crudity to the glass, you know. Um, you know, 
Who can complain about... Let me try that again. Really can't complain about color being missing. Even if you want to call them all amber or brown. <laughs> yeah. Well, out of the uh, bottle mine, I dug up four different kinds of cures. Uh, four Warner's kidney and liver cures, which are the most common, but boy, you gotta love that color for that iridescence from being buried. This is, this is a pretty one. And it's got that real funky, drippy applied top to it. Um, all of them were applied top and this one was the crudest of the bunch. Um, everything you want to see in a Warner Safe Cure. Uh, three of these were dug up, the Sanford's uh, Radical Cures. Um, and it's got the early base embossing on it, um, applied top. All three of them that came out were in perfect shape. Yeah, I'll take that any day. Uh, this is the only one of these that came out, Dr. Sykes' Sure Cure for Qatar. I'd never heard of it before. Um, not saying that it's rare, because <laughs> it ain't, but it was rare to me, and uh, a new addition to my cure collection, probably 1880s, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, sweet little bottle. Um, the coolest one out of the bunch was this Dr. Keeley's Gold Cure for Drunkenness. Uh, sadly, it has a number of chips in the lip, but even with the chips in the lip, I could tell that this one actually has a little pore spout, which I think is on the earlier ones, if I remember correctly. And considering they came with an instruction to break the bottle after being emptied so that their unscrupulous competitors couldn't reuse the bottles, I guess finding them in any shape is a, is a pretty good deal. I did download this label, uh, an original label, off the internet, and it was, boy, it copied just perfectly. I mean, I was able to just slap that right on the label side, and... Uh, I think it looks pretty cool. What do you think? Probably, yeah. Anyway, um, that was it for the cures. Um, a nice little, a nice little addition. I'll take that any day. And here's a small handful of bottles that are common. Uh, but they didn't come out in common numbers. The only Hostetter's bitters in the in the bottle mine, whole or otherwise. Um, and then I dug up three Dr. Harder's wild cherry bitters. Uh, one from Daytona and this one from St. Louis. And this one from St. Louis looks a heck of a lot older than the Daytona one with the uh, real funky looking letters. Uh, they're almost serif looking. And, uh, and, a, and it's really dark uh, without that light behind it. It almost looks like black glass. And then a, a real typically common Hagen's Magnolia Balm out of uh, the hundreds of bottles that came out, <laughs> only one of these. I saw a video where some guys are digging and they, they must have dug uh, four dozen of these things out of the same hole, which just kind of made me sigh and go, well, there goes the value of my Hagen's Magnolia Palm. <laughs> kind of shoots the hole in that when you see like dozens come out of one hole. But anyway, be that as it may, um, those were sort of the cooler finds. Uh, everything else was, was fairly common. So, I will post some still pictures after all of this, and uh, and that'll be it. Well, alrighty, here's uh, a few more bottles from the bottle mine that were cleaned up, and uh, um, 
some of the more unusual ones. The, let's start with this guy, the Jules Hall uh, from Philadelphia. I suspect it was a hair tonic of some sort. Real early smooth base with a diagonal hinge mold. Um, applied top, although it was very well done. And uh, from what I've discovered about it is that they seem to have disappeared from the uh, business directories by the mid-1860s. Uh, if that's the case, this was one of the oldest bottles I dug up out of the bottle mine, but um, everything was 1870s and newer. Um, <clears throat> this one was the only Amber Colgate and Company bottle out of the hole. It was one of the uh, earlier bottles out of the hole, early as in near the top. Um, so I'm guessing this one's probably uh, early 90s. Uh, oddly enough, same with the Lundborg. These guys made a beautiful Palmer Green uh, style bottle. This one kind of almost resembles a, a Florida water to some degree. I don't know if that's the case or not, but I'd, I guess this one also is like a 1890s. Uh, but it's it's a cool shape. I love it. Uh, this one I... <clears throat> oh, and out of these last three, only the J. Hall came out with a duplicate. The other two were lone uh, examples. <clears throat> and then almost, the, you know, if you're going to find hair, hair products... You're, it's almost remiss not to have a berries, trichinosis, or whatever the heck, trichophorus is, psychophagus, <laughs> however you want to pronounce it, for the skin and hair. And I'd always been told the ones that said directions in the pamphlet were the older ones, but I think they were referring to the pondled versions. This one's definitely not pondled. I'd guess 1890s. It looks like it's a tooled top. Not the earlier applied. Um, very neatly made. Possibly one of the last ones they made, I, I would guess. But they're still always cool to dig up. I dug up three of those. And then, oddly enough, this Hart's Herbal Rock, and, Rock Rye and Barley IXL. HK and FBT and company out of New York. I did a little research on them, and it's definitely an Eastern pumpkin seed. Um, but I had never heard of it before. It doesn't show up in any old books that I have. Um, so I have no idea how scarce they are. I dug up seven of them, I think, six or seven, along with a Duker and Brothers half pint from Quincy, Illinois. Um, sadly, the duker was badly damaged. Every single one of the hearts was either completely broken or it, it was um, perfect. <laughs> no middle of the road, no dings or chipped ones. Um, but anyway, not every day you dig up a pumpkin seed that's embossed, especially uh, seven of them.